Welcome to another episode of Top Lines and Tales, your weekly livestock podcast. And as always, we'd like to shout out to our sponsors, Harbro, for their continued support. This week on Top Lines and Tales, I'm delighted to have a top stockman, some would say a veteran stockman, uh, Dennis Gull. Uh, Dennis, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Andy. And Dennis, as I said, one or two refer to you as a as a veteran. I think we're all getting veterans in this uh, this game now, but a long history in in the cattle been well known to many people. And uh, New Galloway was your home originally, is that right? Yes, uh, I moved to New Galloway in the Glen Thames when I was two months old with my dad and mum. And my dad took up a, a new a job as stocksman for Ine Jennings at the Shield. Okay. She would still be on the go now, I think, wouldn't they? But there'd be a good herd of Galloways back then, I guess. Yes, it still, but the, no longer has Galloway cattle. Uh, Mr. Jens, actually, he semi-retired in, oh, 64, 65, 1964-65, and moved to Netherclough, where father went with him. That's right. I've spoken to um, Peter Hunter Blair, and I think Peter Hunter Blair went there as well and ended up uh, um, taking on the cattle. That's right. That's where Peter is to present the present yes, yes. Uh -huh. I've been up there in a nice part of the world as well, it is. And oh, it was a, lo a lovely retirement spot. <laughs> oh, it was. Uh, and you, you, your father would have shown the, the Galloways back then, probably at the Highland, would he? Yes, father started, he started that at the Shield in 1964, showing, which was silver Dun Galloway's. Okay. Uh, Mr. James was all silver a 100 cows, and father started in 64 at the Highland. Mm -hmm. and, and got on okay? We were, he had two in calf heifers, uh, they were 10th and 11th. Out of a class of 22. Wow. <laughs> 22. And one of these heifers, the one that stood 10 before the show season was finished, was a champion at Moffat Show. So wow. it shows you what the, the, the line up in these days and the, how tough it was to get to the top. There wouldn't be many classes of 22s ever since, or certainly not, apart from maybe in amongst well, the Texel sheep and that. Certainly not, not now, but in these days, you know, that was pre continental mm. days, and there were, it was, there were big, big uh, entries of Galloway Cup in these cool. days. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and, and you, as a young man, they would have learnt your trade then, and then you moved on to work with some more Galloways, I think. That's right. I mean, that, that was my first Highland show with Father, and we went again. And well, we went each year, but '67 uh, was the last year with Father, and I then took up a new job, which was just uh, down the road, it was just next door's farm, and got a job as a tractor man. And uh, I said that would be fine. I would do the tractor work, but. He had a herd of 25 Galloway cows, and I wanted to look after them, of which he gave me that chance of looking after the Galloways there. So, right from the work of working days, I've been with Galloway cattle. And that would be Sinclair, would it? What would the herd be called there? That was that was the Lord Sinclair's herd at Blahuia. Okay. Uh, and it was under, there was a chap, Arnold Sharp. He was my boss. He was the manager, and... That was where I started. And were, were they, uh, the, the, the Galloways there, been a reasonably successful herd before you got there? How did you get on with them? Uh, not really, no. They were just uh, what you would maybe see an up and coming that had went to the one wee local show, but the, uh, my intentions was to go a bit broaden the horizon and go a bit further. And I uh, was started getting tickets at local shows and then 1971 I think was my first Highland show Okay, with them and went there with one in calf heifer with high hopes and there was seven in the class and I was in the middle, I was four okay. it was it was where I thought I would be myself but it was a pretty quick 
learning curve to see how good you had to be if you wanted to be at the top. Fair enough. Good, yeah. gr good grounding. And you went to the to the Yorkshire show, I believe, as well. Yorkshire show, probably 72, 73, I started at the Yorkshire show. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was very successful. I was female champion, and we won the interbreed group of four that day, okay. which was the first time the Galloway breed had ever won at the Great Yorkshire Show. Yeah. And that was with my father in the team with Silver Dunn and my father's best friend with two Silver Dunns from the Chumley herd down in Cheshire and the stock one there was Peter Copeland. Okay. So it was a real family day. Indeed. And the Great Yorkshire Show, of course, is a stronghold of the Galloways, has been for years, and even now we go there, they've got their own bar and, and their own section, and uh, Galloway's always oh, well, well represented in there. It, it, hopefully we can just keep it going. It, it's a great place to advertise the Galloway breed, because you're sort of, well, you're way out of Galloway country, and different people see them down there, and some of them, some visitors at the show even wonder what breed they are and it's good and they can catch on and yeah it's a good very good show to publicize your head sure and a stomping ground of jim ross if i remember right has he not won it more times than anybody else oh it is jim had a great uh, run he won in the yorkshire so he had and, and thankfully you know jim kept the flag flying probably if it hadn't been rumsbeer who knows? They might not have been Galloways today, but so. he certainly done that for the Brilliant. for the Galloway Society and for the Yorkshire. Yeah, good, 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 good. And you moved on, Dennis, up towards Lockerbie. There, that was. Uh, was well, it... I came over to Lockerbie. My father actually moved to Castle Milk in 1975, okay. but uh, died suddenly in 77. And I, in the notion, I was just married. There was a family on the way. And I couldn't resist the temptation to go and try and do what my father was started to do at Castle Milk. Okay. And that's a big very farm, big. isn't it, Castle Milk? A big estate there as well, but... Uh, it was a mm. very big estate. And, well, we farmed... We had seven farms uh, we farmed in hard. Okay. And after... I just went to Stocksman to do what my father was doing. But after... Two or three years I got moved up to be livestock foreman for all the farms. Okay. That was quite a a big step for me. Sure, sure. And they, but they've got a history. And anybody listening to this and knows anything about Galloways will know of Castle Milk. But the herd goes back oh, hundred years, I think. Yes, I mean Castle Milk. Was, well, I think the herd book for the Galloways was started about yeah eighteen fifty eighteen sixty. Castle Milk was in there at the start, along with. McTucks, Burley, and the Biggers of the Grange, okay. and that. So, yeah, one of the originals. There would actually be Galloways at Castle Milk before the herd book was formed. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a long time. A, a big shoes to fill, I guess, if they've been successful all that length of time. But uh, you gave it a good go, Dennis, well, and you were there a long been, time. It, uh, it had been. I mean, I was, I was at Castle Milk 26 years, and... Uh, but after getting moved up to being sort of livestock foreman, I hadn't the same time for the show, and so I'm afraid it uh, had to take second place for two or three years. But on a, on a on a herd on a farm that big, you'd had a stockman underneath you, I guess. Would you bring into bring in working well, with the cattle? Well, we had we had two dairy farms. We had a nursery and dairy, a black and white dairy. We had a big suckler unit and a huge fattening unit. We had two hill farms, calf rearing units, so there was always plenty going on. So there was, <laughs> and still, still on the go, Castle Milk. I suspect there's probably a lot of a lot of the estates down to trees these days, Dennis. That's becoming a problem, isn't it? It is. Uh, it, it's still on the go. It, it it only carries sheep nowadays. They've done away with all the cattle, which is a shame. But it has sheep. Tree wise, there'll probably be more as there was when I was there, but not a lot more because there always was big plantations, whether it be hardwood or a uh, softwood on the estate anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the forestry side was a big thing in Castle Mount Estate, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then you moved on to uh, another well known herd, Car uh, Cardona, and. Uh 
Well, that, that, that was all because of foot and mouth. Okay. We got the foot and mouth at Casamalt 2001 and were pedigree Ayrshire had, which was the first pedigree had in Scotland to go with foot and mouth. Okay. So it went and eventually over the months and sheep culls, all were sheep were taken. Mm-hmm. So that was meant that it was left with about 1,300 head of cattle on other farms, which we managed to save, but eventually they were all sold up, and I think about seven years was made redundant, so we had to move on, and that's when I moved up to the Galloways at Cardona. That's tragic, isn't it? At the foot and mouth, a lot of people, youngsters say, will never remember it, and thankfully they don't. At, uh, that's, uh, well, I certainly don't want to see that again. That was the, the one thing in my lifetime. It's something I'll never forget, and it was hard going. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, it was very hard going, seeing them. Took out a lot. Seeing them going, then 26 years of your life just went down the drain, and over a year it was... It was tough. Sure, and and you mentioned the the, the, the biggest at the Grange there, of course, lost their, lost their Galloways from there again, went back a long time, and a lot of great genetics went from there. And I think maybe there's been a little bit done now to preserve some of these genetics so that if we do, does happen again, at least there'll be some there in a tin somewhere. Well, hopefully. I mean, I, I would say the Galloway breed was probably one, of, it was certainly the hardest hit beef breed with foot and mouth. There was no doubt about that because... Because of the good herbs, the Grange, the Arlands, the Glintar, a lot of good herbs were just wiped out. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, Rumsbeef was wiped out too. I mean, he went after us and did tremendous well to build them back up again and come to where they came to. Yeah. Takes a lot of dedication to do that, doesn't it, when that's that's been taken it from does. you? It does, because, I mean, you, you just, well, you... You see your life's work just disappear in front of you, and it's ah, it's hard going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is. And we move on, as you said, you moved on to the Galloways at Cardona. But those that don't know uh, the Galloways is the name Robert Galloway and and uh, and his father, not uh, not the Galloway cattle, but. Uh, the Cardona would had some great Angus cattle there, and and I mentioned Smithy, the great Dave Smith was there. Was he there about yeah. the time when you went? Dave retired just before I went. I went up and seen Dave a few times before I attained the job. And was a, we went, and I remember I was asked up to pick a bull a, before the February sale, and Dave and me went round the farms looking at bulls beforehand. And Dave retired down into Canvas Lang, and I went to Cardona, but to, I always enticed them to come up and see me and see how I was doing. Mm-hmm. So I was a bit worried going to a new breed and I thought, well, Dave will keep me right. Yeah. If anybody's going to keep you right, anybody's going to keep you right, Dave would have done. Did. Yeah, he kept a lot of people yeah, right. And that would be, he'd he have died soon after that, I guess. Uh, um. he Well, I would go to Cardona in 2003. Dave would die in about November, December 2004. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was it was a big a big loss to the cattle world. So it was, so it was. A big loss. You're right, and and you mentioned Angus. Of course, he he would have brought some great cattle with him from the three or four herds that he'd been at previous through, through again a lifetimes of work, and you'd inherit some of those there, some good good Angus cattle, and, oh, and some Galloways there as well. I think at Cardona. Well, uh, the, the Angus side. I mean, that was I suppose. One of the things that teamed me there was just looking at the old breeding and the old Galloway, hey, the old Angus cows, some super cows, Edwinas and Ericas and things. And it was it was a great privilege to get the chance to try and carry them on. Mm-hmm. And as you said, big uh, big shoes to fill. I mean, Smithy had won, I don't know how many champions at the, well, go on to the champions at the Highlands here in, in a minute, because you've probably yeah. won your share as well. But he would have won a lot with a lot of breeds, but uh, he'd bring the cattle out right, and, and uh, it was it was some, some shoes to fill. Yeah, he was. I mean, I think he, he would win four championships. He, I, four different breeds champions, Smithy won at the Highlands show, which uh, takes a bit of doing. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and and who else would be there when you went there? Because they would. You know, Cardona's had a few great stockmen at Still, and others a great stockman over oh, there. Oh well, uh, I had uh, Tim Russell was the young lad oh. that was under me oh. when I went. Okay. Well, Tim, he's he's now yet uh, with Andrew Burnett at Spit Open, and he's the 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 main stockman manager at Spit Open. Yeah, I know Tim. A, yep. a good lad, doing a good job. Okay, and when would Woody have been there? Would he not? James Cameron was he there, or a bit, maybe that would be a bit earlier, would it? No, I think that that would be. Oh, that was probably before or after. I can't just remember, but uh, no, I only had it was just Tim Russell and myself when I was there. Well, t- <laughs> Tim, if you're listening, hello, and uh, you obviously got a bit of good grounding and a good a bit of good learning from uh, from Dennis there because he's gone on, as you said, and and done well. And and I mentioned the Galloways because Cardona. Did Dave had worked with Galloways, hadn't he? I think when he was at West Drums, the Smithy would have worked with Galloways, that, and then he brought a few right. back in. Yeah. This is when I first met Dave. Dave would come to Castle Douglas, so 1975, for West Drum Galloways. That was when I first met him. I was just a boy, but he came there, and he had them all dressed and flipped into shape, and I just... Taking a like into that, I thought they were so well turned out, and lovely level top lines, legs all tidied up. And just, I suppose, the t- he taking away that scraggy sort of look from the Galloway and made them, shaped them. Just a little it's bit, a be- little bit before his time, maybe, and that's been said about him in a few oh, weeks. No doubt about it. I mean, we're all sort of trying to do that now. Dave was 20 years before his time in the Galloway world. And probably maybe was that in, in most other breeds as well. He, he just, he had the eye for perfection. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you weren't there very long yourself, uh, Dennis? No, I, I was not for doing it that long myself, but... Uh, he thoroughly enjoyed my time there with the Angus, had a bit of success at the Highland as well, and he then moved on. Robert Graham at Bohan was needing a manager and just moved across the valley there. And team. I had a small herd the Galloways, which he, when the Castle Malt dispersed their Galloways, uh, the wife and me bought the eight in total, so we had a small herd the Galloways, and okay, so seen them eventually to Robert Graham's as well. And so you'd have taken your cattle there with you, I said, and you're, so you're, we'll go on to your own Galloway herd, because it might have been a small herd, but very successful one, we'll go on to those in a minute, but that, some of that would have started from uh, the Castle Milt um, dispersal. Yes, it was all, there were, there was, the eight in total bought at the Castle Malt Dispersal, and that was where the Galway Hub was started off. Okay. As I said, we'll go on to that in a second. Just um, you, uh-huh. you said you moved on to Robert Graham, and of course, another great breeder and a fantastic uh, herd, and great herdsman always been there and, and been the top of everything they've ever done. But you'd go there into limousines, a bit of a, a, bit of a change for you there, limous- Angus and, and Galloway's to limousines. Well, it was a very big change going into limousines, but I remember. Uh, when I had the, went over, Robert wanted me to go over and see the cattle, and I wanted to see the cattle before I said I would take the job, and I walked round his cattle, and we both did, and I thought, well, if I can't breed cattle in here amongst there, then it's my fault, because his cattle was just outstanding in the days, so mm-hmm. And, and and again, I mentioned good stockman. Of course, that um, uh, Danny Wiley had been there as well. So, were you going there to replace one of those, or were you mixing in with with a few uh, others? I actually went to replace Brian Wells. All oh, right. Uh, Brian moved on, and I went to replace Brian. And at the same time, I had uh, a young Ian Anderson there with me. Okay. He was there, and we were. Well, we'd be together probably for a year and a half before Ian moved on. But uh, no, we had, I suppose, instant success at Bahuan. But mm-hmm. the success. cattle were good. Instant success. We talk, um, there's not many people we have on this podcast who can say that they won the Burke Trophy at the Royal, but uh, you walked straight into that one with Graham's Sammy, didn't you? And he was a great beast. Well, it was Graham Sammy. He was the. Uh, 
he was our senior bull the first year we started, and we actually had a very good lineup that year. We, we started at the, we actually started at Rimmon Show. This was the first time that Sammy won the Highland with Brian as a young bull, and that would be two thousand and four. Like- we took him out in five. Drimmon Show was to be the first show out. And I can tell you that the nerves was pretty high that day taking him out for the first time. And uh, But anyway, he went out, he won the limousine. He won the best cattle beast in the show. And it came to the champion of champions. And we there we were in the middle of the ring with Sammy. And oh, we had a big Clydesdale horse on one side of us. And uh, Sammy wasn't disturbed about the Christ to horse, that was no problem to but on the other side we must have had the champion pet, which was a rabbit. <laughs> well that Sammy did not like this rabbit. He shied away and he shied away and he wouldn't stand still and I was getting more nervous because I didn't want to be beat. No. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, after a while and some sweat, eventually he won the champion of champions. So that was our very first time out with Sammy. <laughs> You'd been beaten by a rabbit, Dennis. I'd be ribbing you now. you never forgotten that one. <laughs> oh, it, it would have been bad crack if we got beaten by a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said, you went on and won the book, which of course is a pair of beasts, a male and yeah. a female. And I think uh, your old mucker, Doogie Macbeth, was uh, was the other man in that team. That's right. Well, Doogie and myself, we set off in Graham's lorry to the Royal and we had Sammy on. And we had a pretty good team myself for Graham's that day. I think we would have three firsts that day, but we also had Bernard Mears' money, which was the old thrust cow. Okay. And, well, we were champion, Doogie finished reserve to us, and we were fortunate enough to go out and win the Bat Trophy at our first visit to the Royal Show. Wouldn't be many Royal Shows left by that time, we're talking, what, 2007 or eight, maybe? What year are we talking about? That was, well, our first one was 2005. Oh, okay, all right, right. And then... Well, Sammy did it again in six and seven, and I think there was just about 2,008, and then the next one, that was the finish of the Royal, so, which was a, a crying shame. But Sammy won it three times, yeah? Sammy won it three times, and three times he was there, he won the back trophy, and yeah, that, that was... No. Uh, he, you knew when you were leaving home with Sammy, you knew you would... You wouldn't have got it be far away, no, like. No, no, incredible, incredible feat that, that that was. And then Dennis, you uh, you retired, I think, quite young, didn't you? Two thousand and fourteen, would I be right? But you kept the Galloways, didn't you? I did. Uh, well, I retired into Stirling, and I just did some livery work and that, and I uh, had the Galloways uh, and a wee field I rented from the Cali Market, and but uh, eventually. When we did retire, we were moving back to Lockerbie in 16, and I sold my Galloway's up for retiring, because we would know where to keep them down here, and it was going to be a bit of a burden, so we just decided we would sell them up. And I remember the, the last one, the cow and calf we sold, we sold to Jason and Sarah Wareham. They were up at Stuart and Lindsay Bates wedding and he, Jason says, have you still got one? I says, I'm still a cow in a calf. And so they came and seen it and they bought it. And I told them the day they bought it, I says, that calf will win you something, Sarah. Well, it would be 15 months later, Sarah came out and she won the junior interbreed at the Highlands with that calf. And that was probably one of my proudest moments was seeing that the Wareham's win that prize with my last job. Brilliant, and, had, and a very keen young pair that they are. I think that was 2017, and, oh, they're, and they're still keen to this day, aren't they, those two? They're still keen to this day, mm. yeah. Mm. Uh, and Dennis, your, your Galloway heard you said you started with Galloway as in Gal- as, as opposed to Galloway, which always makes me smile. Um, uh, you, you started with the Castle, Mo- but 2004 was a good Highland show for you. In fact, you've had you had a good run with it with those cattle for that that, that decade and more. Yeah. Well, 2004, I was showing Angus from Cardona. He had an old Edwina cow and. 
and a young Jeremy Eric Pepper. And we finished the female champion and reserve that day and reserve overall mm-hmm. with the Heifer. Mm-hmm. We were just pipped at the post from doing the double because Tom McGregor showed my Galloway for me and uh, he finished Galloway champion. So, yes, a great day. <laughs> champion in two breeds at the same time. That's a bit of, a bit of hard work. And, and as you said, you trust somebody to show the cattle for you. But, you know, fantastic. And and the Silver Bell, I think you mentioned Silver Bell. The Silver Bell line for you, Dennis, was the one that's kind of delivered the, delivered the goods for you. Well, it did. And, and that was quite funny how that happened because I was buying them at that time for Castle Milk and the, the biggest of the grains had two heifers. I had a green gemma which I really wanted but I knew I'd have to pay for her and I thought well maybe I'll not can buy her and there was this green silver bell. So I bought green silver bell. I think she cost me 700 guineas and Emma was I Emma was a bit more as that well, it turned out the green silver bell, she was the breeder. And she was the cheapest one I had ever bought. And she turned out to breed all the good silver bells. You see, uh, certainly did. And I think the one you said you mentioned you sold to Jason and Sarah was that silver bell the twelfth or something, so she'd gone on a good way. That was silver but that was the silver bell the was it the twelfth that went to Jason and Sarah? Mm-hmm. We had them all and in Silver Bell the third she won the Highland in two thousand and ten. And she was the champion Galloway of the decade, the Scottish farmer, which was another proud moment. Of course, of course, that was a great, uh, a great, some great, great, in good company there as well. You were in in the in the interbreed. Oh. <laughs> and, and Dennis, I'll mention another great occasion or place that we all we all went to and would met at would be Smithfield, and you'd go down to Smithfield as well with Galloways and and with various things. Well, I started going to Smithfield. I think I went with Father about 1971, maybe, would be my first Smithfield. Mm-hmm. And that was a very good week because Father finished. He was interbreed steer champion, reserved to the King's Cup, and we won the Duke of Norfolk Trophy. Wow. So that was some Smithfield for me to start away in. Mm-hmm. And went each year and then in Seventy-seven. I moved to Castle Malt in seventy-seven, and I went from Castle Malt in both seventy-seven and seventy-eight. And then, of course, I was moved up to before man, and we had the time after that to do it. But you'd still go down, Dennis. I still went down while, so yes, just to see what the what the the cattle was like and get the crack and that. Always a good, yeah. always a good turnout of Galloway's down there, wouldn't it? And hey, we've had. Uh... It was back in these days, yeah. I mean, you'd always a good turnout. We could always manage to fill a lot of Galloway cattle, oh. and they also did very well in the carcass competitions of Galloway breed at Smithfield. And, and in the crossbreds too, we've had Sandy beaten chatting to a while back, and because Sandy would have a a good herd of Galloway cattle there, and and, and put the Charolais across them, and turn out some great, great cattle right. that way. That's right. That's right. Sandy brought out some beautiful Charlie Galloway cattle, so he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. Fantastic days. I fantastic. Did some of the McMillans too. Sure. Some Jock McMillan and Bod Barrel. They were all Galloway behind these Charlie crosses, like. They were. With the big lugs on them mm-hmm. and just flashy, weren't they? Just uh, beautiful, flashy, and, oh. and, and good carcasses, as you say. Beautiful ears. Could show their soft mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. Let's let's move on to something a bit more controversial. You've been involved in the Galloways quite a while. Nowadays, in the breeds, the, everybody's chasing figures, and, and uh, um, that's something the Galloways never really been involved in. It's always been judged by the eye. What do you think? What do you think of, of, of them bringing into figures into some of these hill breeds now? Have they got a place? Well, uh, I would quite like to have seen some figures in the Galloways because uh, there's uh, the. The fact that the problem has never came about is just that they're way out in the hills there for, I spend most of their life out in the hills. And, you know, Galloway cows, they might be lucky if they're ever into enclosures once in a year. So, I mean, all this recording and weighing and that would be a bit of a burden to a hill farmer. But 
Personally, I would like to, to have seen it because I think they're, they're certainly their fertility, their milk, their long liberty, their easy carbon would have high, high figures like. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're very easy cattle just to, they have to be because they're way out there in the hills and they have to get on with. Exactly, got to look after themselves and in the old, old, weather, old weathers as well from where they come from on that southwest. Uh, That's right. Southwest part I mean, of the world. Rain, hail, sleet or snow, they've got to uh, and rear a calf every year. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it, it's quite common to get Galloway cows 14, 15 years. I spoke to a man the other week. 17 was his oldest cow. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah. that makes a difference, that, quite long, that longevity, doesn't it? And that's what's bringing maybe the breed back. I know there's a revival in the well, native breeds. but the, the breed is certainly on the way back in. We're seeing a bit of money being spent about. I mentioned uh, Cardona now. They're spending a bit of money in the Galloways. And, and just recently... That's they are getting into quite a substantial Galloway herd. They spent at was Cardona, it, which is great to see. Was it eleven thousand yeah. for a Kirkstead bull? I think they spread recently. That's a pretty good commitment. That's right. That's right. The, the eleven thousand, and they're always there or thereabouts, looking for this odd heifer just to build up their herd. Mm-hmm. And, and the same sale, I think, would be the, the Catherine McGregor, of course, and, uh, up at Hairstone and Catherine. Uh, oh. it, 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 it enjoyed, made made a lot of headlines, I think, that one when she bought the Black Craig heifer. Well, from... she did. It, it, it was a Black Craig heifer, and I had mine that they shared along with the Graham boys as well, and I thought she had bloodlines all over the world, and I thought, what an animal for flushing. Mm-hmm. We'll buy this. But anyway, Catherine must have had in the back of her mind she was going to buy it too. So, ah, uh, we had a bit of ding dong, but I had to give up. So, uh-huh. <laughs> the pension they wouldn't stretch any further. So <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd push, I knew you'd push her, but she was a great looking beast. I haven't seen her in the flesh, but in the oh, photographs, looked a tremendous looking, a great example of the beast. Outstanding heifer. Mm-hmm. She really was. She was, she was just. I, you don't see many heifers like her, no. and just her bloodlines was what she was appealed to me. She had Australian, Canadian, native mm-hmm. blood in her. It just, I thought, mm-hmm. what an opportunity to flush, and I hope Catherine has success with her too. I'm sure she will. I'm sure she will, and I, I think everybody's waiting for her to, <laughs> to turn out with him probably fairly soon. What When was that, Dennis? Be three, three, four years past, or three years past, is it? That'll be about three years past, I think, yeah. 2000. And you, you mentioned um, the Grahams there, so we'll go round to that, that you did after you retired. I'm not quite sure how it came about, but young John Graham at, at, at Burnfoot and a tremendous stockman that he is, and I think you've got a bit of interest in, in the breed along with him. Oh, well, we have. I mean, the, the, the Graham family and were sales who were always very friendly when we were up at Stirling and we we'll watch these these boys. They came over to Bohuan quite a lot to see the limas and see the dairy. And they were just, I don't know, six or seven. But such keen boys and that. And I watched them grow up and made great friends with their mum and dad. And they, they used to help me when I had my own galleries up there. And and then it, the partnership started I, coming home for the Yorkshire show one year. They felt that they said to me, would you not like to have a Galloway again? And I says, oh, no, I've no but to keep them, John. And I didn't want the hassle. And they must have been talking about it because they said, if we were to keep them and do all the work and do all the hassle, would you be interested? And, of course, that's how it started. Well, so okay, okay. I was very pleased you stay. kept me in contact with the Galloway breeders and at the same time I was encouraging two young lads into the Galloway breed which I think was more important to me. Anyway. A win-win and I say not just two young lads but two great stocksmen I think they've got uh, Blue, Les- Blue Lester sheep as well don't they and, and one or two others and uh, yeah. well respected amongst the, amongst the breed and, and you bought did you buy a couple of heifers in there I think you bought one in 2021 didn't you? Well, as I say, we ran up the one that Cathy got, and then we got one from Romsby at that day, uh, and that was her first one. And Well, she had a, a heifer calf, her first heifer calf, and it was shown 
last year. We turned it to live Scott last year, and we were fortunate enough to be Galloway champion okay. with the first car we had bought. Okay, okay. Uh, we've now got five. We're five in total between us now. Okay, so. and and you turned those eight at the Highland, I think, last year, did you? And the Yorkshire as well, mate. You were certainly at the Yorkshire. Yes, we we turned one to the Highland last year. She got a. She was second and very well, and well, she was champion at Drummond and champion at Ayr, and yeah, ho- hopefully we'll have something again this year, for sure. Okay. And you were down at the Yorkshire, I know, because my wife Wendy and I had a bit of crack with you in the bar there, and uh, she sends her regards. That's Dennis. right. <laughs> That's right. Always love going to the Yorkshire. It's probably my favourite show now, just because it's very relaxed. Sure. And, I totally agree. Uh, you just. Uh, I can sort of sit back and enjoy it. The BM boys, they take their sheep and uh, we share the caravan and the crack's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they brought my sheep back for me uh, from the Highland last year. Good lads, as you say. And, and uh, Dennis, you were recognised in, I think, 1997, so we're back away with the Gold Steer Award. Uh, what's that about? I've never heard of that one. Well, well, <laughs> the Gold Steer was... Uh, uh, we always showed in the, the live dead weight for the Scottish National Fat Stock Show when it started. Okay. But each year we went, and well, then 1997 was the 100th year of the Scottish National Fat Stock Club. Okay. So the Galloways of Scott Beef, uh, they always gave a silver steer to the champion carcass. But on the centenary year, they gave a gold steer, right. and we were fortunate enough to win it that day, and that's where the gold steer came from. And that steer, it'll be 100 years before it's presented again. That steer. Is that right? Okay. So and the, is that solid gold, Dennis? I think it's supposed to be. <laughs> it sits in Castle Milk Castle, and uh, yeah, okay. it'll, it'll be solid gold. It was quite a prized item. I though would it was. Say so. <laughs> you wouldn't want that sitting on your mantelpiece. You'd be frightened never to lock it, door, would you? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, it, it's it's there in the castle, and mm. it, uh, no, it was a big occasion. I had to get dressed up in evening suit to get presented with that one. <laughs> I felt a bit out of my depth, but enjoyed getting the steer. Uh, so it is. excellent to get recognised, and you've been recognised in a lot of places I know and also in the show ring uh, you've judged your share of, of shows I think you judged the Highland in 2016 was it but you'll have judged all around the country and that's an enjoyable job too Dennis yes I've, I've judged I've judged all the royal shows either be it cattle or sheep but uh, I, I love judging even the wee one day wee small day shows you know to go back there to be asked back to judges it to me is a great privilege absolutely absolutely and you i like doing it and i just please myself and you judged the stars of the future i think just recently that's a good event there robert patterson's got a bit of weight behind that but those boys are doing a good job with that show aren't they that's right that's right it uh, uh judge center beat a couple of years back there and that, that was a great day too super show just rose up in the last i don't know what 10 years if that and it's uh I mean, the, the entries this year, 400 entries or something, it's, oh, it's, I just hope that we can maybe get the Galloway breeders docked into that one as well. I, I would love to see the Galloway breed being there represented, just in amongst all these other breeds. Well, Dennis, they'll be listening to you on this podcast, that's for sure, so I'm glad you said that, because that's something I think that uh, that is lacking there, and they do need to get, most of the breeds are getting represented at the Stars of the Future, but all the breeds need yeah. to be there. It's it's a great uh, great shot window for the youngsters, isn't it? And and you mentioned, the, uh, um, you mentioned the sheep, Dennis, and I know you have been involved in the sheep. Tell me a little bit about your career in the sheep world. Well, I suppose it all started away at Castle Milk, and uh, we used to go each year. We went to the north to Laird and bought with North Country ewe lambs and to produce the half bred, the Scotch half bred sheep. And we had uh, a lot of success and a lot of headaches and worries along, along with it, but we were really quite successful at Castle Milk and breeding half bred sheep. Okay. and. And then, well, when I moved to Robert Graham's, he had before, and he had right, about 20 bearish and ewes at the time, and oh, I didn't like into that bearish and ewes. 
I don't know, Robert just seemed to let me get on with them and we had a lot of success in them too, mm. so we had mm. between Highlands and Royals and Belt Wales and that. And Certainly did have a, a lot of success. Did you show at the Royal Welsh with them as well? Because there's quite a stronghold of them down there now. Uh, we didn't show at the Royal Welsh. We went each year to the top sale. Ah, right, okay. okay. And, and Belt, we tain variations there. And mm. I think we were fortunate we went five years and five years who we won it so we did so no that was good but it, it was nice just to have one or two sheep because if things wasn't going so right and your days work and that you could get away the sheep at night and sort of made you forget about what was happening in the cattle world. Well, like. maybe as long as they're all upright and and you mentioned the Berishon so Callum and, and Emma Hillhouse down there in the south I think they started their Berishon flock because uh, Callum was at uh, at Robert Graham's as well, and uh, got some good That's sheep right. down there. Yep. Yes, yep. I, I, when I started, Callum he w was big in the berish and uh -huh. world. He was, uh -huh. yeah, still doing okay, uh -huh. still doing okay. And I mentioned the, the the youngsters, but the young people as well. Dennis, something you've been very much involved in, as you mentioned yourself uh, with John Graham. But uh, you've done a lot with the youngsters, haven't you? Done some stuff for the young the young Angus breeders as well, the YDP, and putting a bit yes. putting a bit back, Dennis. I was always very fortunate I had a good young lad with me. I mean, it started away at Castlemont with Tom McGregor and then with Tim at, at Cardona. And then, well, there was young Ian Anderson number one when I went. He moved on and I got through his luck. Okay. And, and John Graham. I've been very fortunate to have Teen lads round about me. Now you mentioned a bit of a who's who of the youngsters amongst that lot with Drew as well. I didn't uh, didn't realise you meant it him, but as I said, you've done a bit for the the young Angus breeders as well, the demonstrations and that sort of things. And it's about giving a little. Well, I'll to... try to do, if I can do anything to help young kids. Uh, uh, well, like, I like to see the young kids coming on. And what advice would you give the youngsters getting into the job nowadays, Dennis? Oh well. My advice always was to work hard at home. Uh -huh. Do your work hard at home and you can take your animals to the show. And enjoy your show, but never forget the reason why you're at the show. And that's to look after your animals. Mm -hmm. But uh, And, you know, keep them clean and tidy. There's, there's only one judge at the show and it, you don't have to they think that the judge is always right because round the ring there can be a hundred or two hundred judges. And it's important to have them looking the part all the time they're at the show. That's Amazing. where your sales comes from at the show. You present them good at the shows, you'll get people coming back to your sales and looking for your name and that. Mm -hmm. You're right, it's not just on the on the show day, it's the whole duration when you're at the show. and It's the whole duration, mm. yeah. Uh, uh. And, and you mentioned you know, doing the work at home, and that was one of Dave Smith's mantras, wasn't it? Dave Smith would have his cattle so sorted. Oh, out. absolutely. He'd, he'd get to the show. Do the work at home, and, and start in plenty of time, you know. Your show season starts in the back end the year before, starting to... Mm -hmm to decide what you're going to show and, and work from then on. There's no use of taking the beast to the show and then thinking you can do everything that week. Once she goes to the show, she wants to lie and rest to judge and do no bit. Pump at the boot way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True enough. Very wise words, Dennis, and wise words from a wise man. And I've really enjoyed having your time on this uh, podcast. Uh, hopefully, you'll be back at the Highland and the Yorkshire again. I think Wendy and I will be turning out with the sheep again to try, oh, try and well. defend our honour. So we'll be coming on for a drive. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see you all again. Yeah, 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 brilliant. Well, it's been a great pleasure to have you on there, an absolute legend of a, of a stockman and a long generation. I'm sure our listeners have enjoyed listening to you, Dennis. I wish you all the very best to carry on doing what you're doing and enjoying it. Well, thank you for that. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Top Lines and Tales, kindly sponsored by Harborough. And this time of year, as the cows calve down, the clock starts ticking pretty much straight away uh, to get those cows to regain their body condition and back onto a rising plane of nutrition so they come bulling again. So uh, don't forget to look out Harborough's Super Suckler Buckets. Uh, they're a great way to top up the mineral levels and kickstart that bulling season. So do look out Harborough on the internet and on social media or contact your local representative and 
And don't forget while you're on social media to look up the Top Lines and Tales Facebook page where you'll find more information about this and other episodes. <laughs>